Hello and welcome to Tiki Tuesday. That's right, it's another Tiki Tuesday. Glad to see everybody who's hanging out with us tonight. Hope you're having a great week and are ready to kick back with some cocktails and some artwork. Tonight's drink is courtesy of Shaker and Spoon. Let's see if we can get this in frame there. So, Coma la Mejor. Uh, this is a tropical drink, but it's got bourbon or scotch, excuse me, scotch instead of rum. So this is part of Shaker and Spoon's uh, Summer Scotch 2 box. So this will be a good one uh, to try out tonight. You can see some of the ingredients there. We've got cinnamon spiced sugar on the rim, scotch, mango nectar, tamarind citrus cordial, and uh, two types of bitters. So it should be a good one. Hey, Dr. Taco MD, great to see you. Uh, yeah, I knew that yesterday was Mai Tai Day, and I thought about doing a Mai Tai, but I did promise that we would do a shaker and spoon cocktail tonight. So this is the one we're doing right here uh, from their Summer Scotch 2 box. And uh, I did put a link in the chat for anyone who wants to try shaker and spoon. You can get 50% off your first box. It's not a commercial. They don't pay me for saying that. If enough people sign up, I do get a discount on one of my boxes, though. So just so everyone knows. But great to see you, Dr. Taco. I hope you're having a great day. Let me know what kind of fun drinks you've been making. And good to see you too, Catherine. So here is our shaker and spoon cocktail. This one's really funny. They give you everything except for the alcohol. So you just measure it out and pour it right in there. All right, give that a really good shake. It is really cold. And tonight we'll be using the um, the creepy tiki glass that uh, Quench Press got me. You can check that out. That was very nice of him. And it does have the spiced cinnamon sugar rim that goes with this cocktail. So we'll get that in there. See if I can do it without spilling tonight. This should have a pretty good color. Oh yeah, look at that. With the mango and the tamarind. Very golden, what a great great color that is we'll see it as it gets up into the ice a little bit more try to get that turned around for you but wow that looks really really good try to get every last drop out of there oh yeah look at that all right give it one last little shake get that up where you guys can see it so it's got the mango nectar and the scotch and everything in there so cheers to all of you oh oh my okay so it's my first tropical drink with scotch in it i have to say it's really good it's very fruity at the for at the front and then it finishes with that scotch flavor and of course you can use any scotch you like so if you want it peaty smoky at the back end you can do that which might actually work on this one or if you want it more mellow, you can go with like an Isla or something. Um, I did use an Isla scotch tonight. I don't remember which brand because I have like 50 bottles of scotch. Uh, but I did use an Isla scotch. So I wanted something that was kind of medium bodied so that it wouldn't overpower. But I think the fruitiness of this, you could do a heavier, smokier, peaty scotch. Uh, maybe something like a Lagavulin or something. Or something even smokier than that. Um... Let's see, Dr. Taco says, making beach bum berry. We'll be here for our third anniversary Makahiki event. Get your tickets now, oh, that's great. Um, for those listening that don't know Dr. Taco, remind us where your bar is located so they can come visit your neck of the woods. Good to see you, Whitney, cheers to you. That's nice. Uh, Dr. Daku says, I would recommend using a blended like monkey shoulder in most tiki cocktails. You know what? I've heard that from someone else as well, Dr. Daku. I think that's probably a great choice. It says, it's very approachable. Monique says, hi. Hi and cheers to you, Monique. All right, I got to slow down. This one's got a lot of scotch in it, so I don't want to get too crazy right with that. Dr. Daku wants to remind everybody that he works at Actually, Dr. Taco, I don't know if you're a he or a she or a they or a them, but I will just say that Dr. Taco MD works at Inferno Room in Indianapolis, uh, one of the 50 best bars in the world, according to Discovery. And uh, so come check out the Inferno Room in Indianapolis for their Mahiki Tiki event coming up soon. They have tickets online. 
<laughs> Dr. Tarsus, okay, done with the sales pitch. Um, Monique says, ooh, I'm only four hours from there. Well, there you go, Monique. That could be worth a road trip for the Mahiki Tiki, or Mahiki Maka, hold on, I'm going to get this right. The third anniversary Makahiki event. There you go. I got it right that time. Um, oh, and Dr. Chakra says, I'm a he. Okay, good to know. You know, I don't want to make assumptions, so that's good to know. All right, so yeah, that's our cocktail. Just for those that missed it, this is the one we're doing tonight. This is from Shaker and Spoon's Summer Scotch 2 box, and they send you everything except for the alcohol. So you just pick the scotch you want to use and make the cocktail. And there's a couple of other in the box too, so it's a lot of fun. All right, so tonight's part two dose of our sort of enchanted tiki room uh, stream. Oh, thanks for the hydrate, Whitney. Cheers to you guys. You see the lovely, lovely glass out here. This is the creepy tiki double rocks glass. My type, my type glass, whatever you want to call it, right? And uh, that's a, a gift from Quinch Press. <laughs> Dr. Jocko says, I'm a big burly bald ginger man. I mean, I think that sounds appealing to everybody, so nothing wrong with that. And especially if you're if you're slinging drinks, it can be everybody's best friend. All right, so yeah, oh, right. I actually have to draw and paint something tonight. Okay, here we go. You know, guys, if I seem loopy, it's not even the alcohol yet. It's that this is my third stream of the day. So I had a comic coloring class this morning that I think is one of the best iPad classes I've ever taught in my life and I was really excited. We had a, a nice group of people there live in the class and I went to share the recording and it recorded eight seconds and then timed out or something. I don't know what happened. That's never happened before. I was so mad because it was so good. I want to share it with everybody and it's gone. Oh, do not want to take that phone call. And, um, and then I had like a three hour Zoom and now I'm here. So if I get a little loopy, just that's what it's from. Uh, all right, so let's dive in to our Enchanted Tiki Room, Barker Bird artwork. I think we'll start with some of this foliage down here and then we'll work our way up to our Tiki Idol and maybe some of these flowers and things. So we should be able to get this either finished up or really close uh, to finished up this time. You know me, I, I never stop messing with these things. I'll go back with the color pencils and give it a little extra love, you know, but just something fun to do while we chat and talk about our cocktails. You guys, let me know what, what you're drinking tonight. Let me know what you're, what beverage you're having. We know what I'm having. I already told you mine. Uh, Woody says, that's a fun glass for sure. Yeah, I like that one. I, I was so glad to receive that as a gift. I think Quinch and I kind of have a, now a thing of uh, finding interesting barware to give back and forth. And I have to say again, guys, I've never had a tiki drink with scotch in it before, but this is a winner. Like you could put this in your normal rotation and you would not be disappointed. This is a winner. All right, so just wanna take some of the areas of this foliage and get a couple of like some lighter shades and some darker shades and just, just start to give it a little bit of depth. I'm trying to go really towards the sort of like flat color spectrum here, like a, a vintage Disney poster style, you know, with the more of the flat blocky colors. And uh, Whitney says, not Tiki related, but the Back to the Future prints turned out really good. I love how they connect. Thank you so much. Um, now, did you get yours? I know you have one of them, but did you get your newest ones in the mail yet? Um, I think People are a little confused on how the deal, the 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 buy one get one free or the free with purchase deal works, and it's kind of like the Legend of Lando artwork that I had, which is um, I'm in a situation where I need to give this away free with purchase. I can't ask people for money for this artwork, but what I can do is say, hey, if you buy this other thing, I can give this to you for free. So if you're a fan of Back to the Future and you want the Back to the Future art. You have to buy this other thing, this DeLorean anniversary art, which I also think is cool. But if you don't want that, it's okay because you're getting the other thing for free. You're not spending any more money. So it's kind of a wink, wink way for you to acquire this artwork 
but I'm not actually charging you money for the Back to the Future artwork, right? This is the same thing that we had to do with the Legend of Lando. Some people seem to get it right off the bat and they understand how the deal works. Other people seem to be like, but I just want to buy the Back to the Future art. And I'm like, well, you're not spending any more money and you're getting it for free. So hopefully that makes sense to everybody um, so that we can keep all the powers that be happy. That artwork was originally supposed to be released um, at San Diego Comic-Con, uh, well, two years ago now when COVID hit in, in 2020. And uh, it was going to be on some Hot Wheels packaging and all kinds of stuff. And I can assure you that getting it free with purchase is a lot cheaper than what it would have been at San Diego Comic-Con. So um, it's a good deal. And I think everyone who gets it is going to love it. But I know some people are a little confused on how that deal works. Um, Ash Corbin, good to see you. Uh, Ash says, this is quite enchanting. Well, thank you for that. You've, you've keyed into the theme. I appreciate that. Good to see you. It's been a while. So glad to have you pop in. Uh, it's been nice to see all the people who are coming to the streams now that I've been back for a couple weeks. So I do appreciate it for sure. And I'm just going to glaze some two or three shades of green up onto this foliage so that we get like a couple of different levels. Uh, Rady Cakes, good to see you. Rady Cakes says, hey, hey, hey. Uh, excellent to see you. I hope all's going well, Rady Cakes. So last week, I got to ask you guys what you thought about some of the changes going on at Disney, uh, Disney Parks. And then, of course, this week they announced their Genie program. Genie Plus, I think is what it's called. I would just love to hear what you guys think about that. So, uh, Randy... Chow and anyone else who has anything to say about the, the Genie Plus program, I'm dying to hear what people, especially people who are pass holders or people who are locals to the park, what you guys think about that. Uh, Whitney says, hey, 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 Randy Cakes and Ash. Monique says, uh, having a Henry Weinhardt's Black Cherry Cream Gourmet Soda made with cane sugar. Ooh, that does sound good. Whitney says, I got the two-pack on Saturday, I think. Oh, good. I'm glad to hear it arrived. And I know that you said you didn't mind getting a second uh, of the DeLorean prints, so hopefully you like that. I, I questioned sending out duplicates, but I sent out messages, and um, I think all but one person said, yes, I want another one of those. Please send me one. So uh, glad, glad that you, you got it and that you're going to enjoy it. Um, so far, the response has been good, like I said, other than people just being a little confused about the deal. Um, for anyone who doesn't know or anyone who wants one, I'll put it in the chat right now. Uh, this is the Back to the Future artwork free with purchase when you buy the DeLorean anniversary artwork. So again, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. That's how you can get the Back to the Future artwork. Um, Whitney says, you just have to recruit four friends and then you recruit four friends. <laughs> Yeah, right. Can we do some multi-level multi-level marketing, right? I uh, I was I was in a Zoom meeting today where I got the chance to tell a story that I don't think I've told you guys and I won't I won't name names, but I know a person who who joined like a religious cult or commune years ago and when I found out that this person had done that, I thought, well, that sounds just like this person because they're always running away from their problems and they're not good at holding down a job and all that. And so they're telling me, this person's telling me how they had to sign a vow of poverty and how great it's going to be because this, this organization is going to provide their room and board and they get to just you know, praise Jesus all the day and be in prayer meetings and how fantastic their life's going to be. It's their calling. Yada, yada, yada. Well, I don't even think two years went by. And then that person finally is back in contact with everyone in the real world. And I found out that that person was, when you're in this commune situation, and you sign the vow of poverty and they give you the room and board, well, they expect you to do something. You know, they're growing crops, they're doing whatever, they're doing whatever. You have to earn your keep. 
And of course, remember, I said this person is not very good at that stuff. So can you imagine being in a situation where one day in your religious commune and everyone's all happy and Christ loves you and everything, they come up to you like, hey, guess what? You're such a slacker, we're going to kick you out of our religious cult. <laughs> you can't carry your own weight. You're not doing enough in our cult. <laughs> so we're kicking you out. So that kind of tells you all you need to know about this person. But um, that kind of came out of nowhere, but it was a, a story that was shared today. And so I thought that you guys would, would enjoy that. And maybe, maybe you know someone who kind of fits that bill. Maybe you know someone who's they're always looking for that multi-level marketing or that easy way out or, uh, you know, you know the kind of person I'm talking about probably. And, uh, and next time you run into that kind of person, just think, like, you're so, so shiftless, you know, even if you joined a cult, they'd probably ask you to leave. <laughs> uh, Monique says, did the Collector's Club email come out yet? Yes, it went out overnight, Monique. So if you did not get yours, you can use the link that I shared in the chat just there. That is the link to that deal. Randy says, yeah, I'm not ready to talk about any of that. It's okay, Randy. I'd love to hear your take on it, but um, I understand people are really upset. And especially if you live in Orlando and you've got a pass and you've had access to the parks and access to the rides and everything and now they're like, okay, we want you to make a reservation, we want you to buy a ticket and then once you're inside, we want you to buy this other service that gets you onto one ride for your $15 and most people I think are gonna spend that $15 thinking that that service gets them onto all the rides but it's just one, and then after you use the one, then you get to spend more money to get on other rides. And I know some people said, well, it's only for rich people, but even then, it has a limit of two of the big rides per day, so you still can't get on everything you want, even if you were a rich person. So it definitely seems like the kind of thing that's upsetting a lot of people. I think it kind of makes Disney parks look bad in a way. It, it you know, they're, I know they're in business to make money, but um, it sure, it sure, I think, is coming across the, the wrong way, and we'll see if, if they have to course correct or if, uh, or if people tolerate it. I don't know. Uh, Whitney says, I'm having a sour, oh, uh, I'm having a sour that, I, that Four Noses Brewing made in collaboration with a bar called Death & Company. It's meant to be an homage to a cocktail they make. Oh, well, that sounds really good. That sounds really good. Now, is that a, a sour IPA or a um, or like a sour Belgian, like a saison, or what? Inquiring minds want to know. And of course, Quinch Press is not going to be here tonight because he's hanging out with bartenders. Boo. They should all be hanging out with us. But if you guys follow Quinch Press's Instagram account, you will see he's been very active. He's been um, hitting up all kinds of cool bars and stuff. So um, if, you, if you're following him, you know, be sure and, and look at some of these cool posts that he's putting up right now with amazing cocktails and talking to different bartenders and stuff. It's really, really great content. I get jealous every time I look at it. I'm like, I wish I was hanging out at that bar. That was almost like my old man Scooby-Doo villain voice. I was like, and I'd have got away with it too if it hadn't been for those kids and their dog. Tarnation. Uh... What he says, called Love Bug Sour Ale, brewed with pineapple, raspberry, Meyer lemon, and agave nectar. Oh my gosh, that sounds freaking fantastic. Sign me up for two of those. I'm a sucker for pineapple uh, in beer. That We have a local one here from Santan Brewing called Mr. Pineapple. And uh, it is fantastic. It's a great summer beer for a hot day here in Phoenix. I've turned so many of my friends onto it. And uh, 
they're all like, pineapple beer, that sounds horrible. And they take one sip and they're like, bring me more. I must have more. Because it's just that good, you know. And it's not one, it doesn't taste like candy. I think we all have had those kind of beers that taste like candy. This isn't that. This is really refreshing, really light. Uh, Monique says, I just checked and my stupid email sort to spam. Yeah, it happens sometimes. Uh, Katie says, it sounds like a county fair. You pay to get in and still have to pay for the rides. Yeah, I think a lot of people are feeling that way right now. Um, and I understand that, you know, look, you don't have to pay extra. You can just stand in line forever. But, you know, one of the uh, Mickey Views news was reporting or pointing out that it's actually self-serving because the more people that use the app, then the longer the standby or the longer you have to wait in the standby line. So then that motivates more standby people to use the app. And plus it has like surge pricing. So it might be $15 to ride to go to the short line on a slow day, but it could be like 25 or $30 to get on that fast line on a busy day. So the more people that use it, the longer the standby line gets and the more expensive it gets to use the app. So it's a, uh, even if you're paying to use the app, it's not really a win for you because the more people that use it, the longer you have to wait too. So it just, uh, I don't know. It seems like, you know, fans will put up with so much, but then eventually they won't. Eventually they'll snap and they'll, you know, go to a different park or not go to Disney or whatever it is. So very, very interesting to see what will happen. Uh, Wendy says, it's just a sour ale. Dr. Draco says, that's weird. I haven't seen him at Inferno Room. Uh, Chow Time's here. Hey, good to see you. Chow Time says, painkiller for me. That's always a good one. And Chow, we to hydrate. Cheers to you. I gotta say, guys, tropical cocktail with scotch. I really wouldn't have guessed that I would like it, but there it is. It's a winner. So make it yourself or get your box from Shaker and Spoon. See what you think, but I'm impressed. All right, I think our foliage is uh, kind of coming to life here. We're getting some levels of depth. It's starting to look like something. So just do a little bit more work to this and then we'll move on to our Tiki Idol. Tiki Tiki. Cause you can't do the Tiki Room and not have a good Tiki Idol, right? It's kind of what it's all about. I saw some friends posting from Trader Sam's. I was like, I want to go to there. It's been, it's been way too long. Way too, way too long. But I don't know. Do I have to have a Fast Pass or a Genie Plus to go to Trader Sam's now? I don't know how it's going to work. I'm very confused. I mean, I think we all knew that already, but more so than usual. Let's go a little bit darker on the screen. Uh, Chat Time says, we may go to Trader Sam's this weekend. Oh, how cool. Now, do, are you guys, since you're local, do you normally do stuff like weeknights to avoid the crowds? Or do you stick to weekends? Or does it not matter? Is it just busy all the time because it's just such a popular destination? And as Trader Sam's, is that still, um, you just check in and drop your name and then come back when they buzz you or, or text you? Or do they actually do like real reservations now because of uh, the pandemic and everything? Because I know for the longest time, they wouldn't let you do any kind of like advanced booking of that. And I wondered if that had changed like so many things have changed. It's kind of funny how many things have gone from like, we don't take reservations to where they're like, oh wait, if we take reservations, we know exactly how many people are coming and what we need. <laughs> um, Chow Time says we're staying at the Dolphin for some R&R. &R. Well, that's awesome. Now, I've never stayed at the Dolphin, but I think I've been inside for one of the restaurants. I'm sure I have. Um, we normally, well, when I was coming out for Star Wars, we would normally stay, I think the first year they put me up in the boardwalk, which I absolutely adored. And then every year after that, it was the beach club. 
which maybe didn't look as cool on the outside, but um, was a great place to stay. I mean, great restaurants and, you know, pool, and it was fantastic. I loved it. But So we would walk over to the Dolphin and, and get, like, food or drinks, but I never stayed there. Is Dolphin technically run? I know it's not technically run by Disney. Is it run by one of the big hotel chains or not? Monique says, order 1888 confirmed. Well, thank you, Monique. I really appreciate that. I really, really do. Thank you. And I hope you love it. I really enjoyed making that artwork. I'm very heartbroken that because of COVID, it didn't get to be released at San Diego Con. But at the same time, you know, at least that means that everybody has a chance to get it now. So I appreciate your support. Thank you so much. Just a little bit more detail here with this, and I think we'll be ready to move on to our Tiki guy. Uh, Chow says the dolphins are on my Marriott. Okay, that's what I thought, but I wasn't sure. Hmm. Now, I don't have enough Marriott points, but I have a friend who is like the one of the like CEOs or something of some company, and all they do is Marriott points, and I've seen him get in like San Diego Comic-Con like on a whim <laughs> at hotels and stuff, so... I wonder if he's got enough juice to just like show up and be like, yeah, bump somebody else. I'm getting a room. <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me. All right. I think that's kind of looking how I want it. So we can start to think about our tiki, tiki, tiki. Uh, Whitney says, I'm hoping there's a velvet variation. It just looks like velvet on paper. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, man. What have you, I've never done a... a like a velvet painting or anything like that, but that might be one that would work on it with those like, you know, synth wave eighties trapper keeper colors and stuff. That would work out pretty good. All right. What do we think? Flowers, tiki item. We'll do the tiki item. Uh, actually, maybe I'll let that paint dry and I'll do the flowers. That makes sense. All right. So clean this brush. Let's make up like a pink, Get a little bit of white. Um, Catherine, let us, are you still streaming? And if so, let us know how your stream is going and maybe throw a link in the chat to your stream. Um, I'm sorry, I don't know, but I've been away for so long that I'm kind of out of the loop on a lot of this stuff that's going on now. So just, just, just throw it in the chat. Let us know what you're up to. Let us know how it's going. I was talking to someone today, and um, they were in Las Vegas for the UFO convention. And talking to them, it seems like it's just exactly like a Comic-Con type situation with like panels and guest speakers and everything, but it's all about UFOs. And... Um, they mentioned that quite a few of the UFO people had moved off of Twitch and onto Clubhouse, which I thought was kind of interesting. Um, but I don't know how how Clubhouse is monetizing, so I don't know. That's That seemed kind of interesting to hear that, though. Uh, oh, Catherine put up a crying emote, so I don't know... <laughs> That may not be good. <laughs> uh, had to take a long break because of my back. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. I'm so sorry to hear that. Well, if you, uh, you know, whenever you decide to come back, you let us know and you know we'll give you a shout out. So, um, no worries there. Are you are you able to to still uh, paint and create art, create your artwork and everything, or are you having to like chill out on some of that kind of stuff too? It's never, never any fun when you have to sacrifice what you like to do and what you want to do because our bodies are so frail, right? That's, I don't know. It's that saying they always say like, you know, youth is wasted on the young, which I don't know if I agree with that. I had a great time when I was young, but, um, you go from that thing where you're just like super resilient, nothing bothers you, and then like one day, everything bothers you. 
Hey, no worries, Catherine. Artist helping artists, man. That's what we do. Gotta support each other. Oh, speaking of that, um, I don't have any Tiki Mug updates, but I'm going to give you guys a quick Smithsonian update. And that is that nothing's finalized yet, but they've decided they do want to possibly, maybe, <laughs> um, make some merchandise out of some of the artwork that I created for them. So um, I'm waiting to see what, you know, what that means. And then, um, but even for people who can't go to Smithsonian, it might be possible to acquire some of those in the future. So if and when that happens, and I say if and when because in my world, everything is talk until like a contract is signed, right? So um, I don't, I try not to give it permanence until it becomes real. But if and when that happens, you know I'll let you guys know first so that you can uh, get your hands on those, on those goodies. Uh, Catherine says, I'm still doing art. I cannot sit up at a desk yet. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Um, Catherine says, my back went out before we drove from Colorado to Washington and back. Oh, man. Well, I mean, my, my problems aren't as bad as yours, and I'm not trying to steer the conversation to me, but, like, I have some hip things from standing and sitting too much and everything. And so uh, you definitely have my sympathy because I understand, at least on a small scale, what it's like to try to do things when you're in pain, and it's just no fun. It's hard to concentrate. You can't, you can't give it your best. Dr. Taco says, we just sold out of our Tiki Diablo mugs, but we have two Tiki Farm mugs right now. That's awesome. And one comes out this weekend. That is so great. Um, you know, feel free, Dr. Taco, to put like a link to your bar uh, website or their web store or wherever people can find those. Um, my Tiki mug, the Witch Doctor's Potion, is still in production, so we don't have an estimated date yet for... Uh, sales or anything like that, but uh, I have seen photos of a glazed prototype. Well, actually, two different glazed colors that will be coming out. So I'm very, very excited, and I can't wait until they're actually done and ready to share with you guys. But uh, it'll be coming soon. But in the meantime, make sure to visit Dr. Taco's bar and pick up some new tiki glasses, tiki mugs. Whitney subscribed to Prime on a 10-month streak. Wow, good for you, Whitney. You know, you might have heard this somewhere. But it don't cost you a dime to subscribe to Octopolis with Twitch Prime. Boom! We did it. I think the doorbells are watching. Got to make sure we get that in there. The ring doorbells, right? They're watching us all the time. Uh, Chow says, I want to see the link. Uh, Chow says we was going to buy a Tiki Land mug and saw they don't deliver for years. Yeah, Chow, who's the company that makes the Stormtrooper armor? <laughs> and they'll have stuff backordered. They'll like take all the pre-orders and it'll be like two or three years before people get their stuff. I think it's the same, the same kind of situation, right? Is they, they've got great designs and beautiful art but it seems like people are waiting a long time and you know look i'm the first to admit like look how long we've been talking about oh <laughs> ash says uh Anavos. yeah that's right that's that's the ones um it sounds like that right like like but i put in my order but you know i mean we've been talking about tiki mugs for a long long time i need to go back and look at like when i sketched out that witch doctor's potion one and you know, how many months is it going to be from sketch to reality? Is it going to be under a year? That's the real question. Is it going to be under a year? It just takes a long time. I'm told there's really, there's only a couple of companies in America that quote unquote make them, but you know, it's all really made overseas. So who knows if there's just like one place doing it all. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah, Dr. Taco, don't forget, put, put a link to your, to your bar's website so that um, everybody can go in and grab a mug. Stock up on those mugs. There's so many cool ones out there. And I'm a big fan of Mai Tai glasses, too. I, I know I threatened to design... Well, I have designed one, but I threatened to make one. I haven't yet, but... I really like Mai Tai glasses, which is, you know, like a double rocks glass, but decorated. And um, 
I, 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 sit, I tend to buy a lot of those. So that may be something we could get made more quickly. Uh, it might be a little, I don't know if it'd be less expensive or not. I don't know how expensive those are, but uh, that might be something fun to do in the future too. Uh, Whitney says, there's a book publisher I buy from that's taken multiple years to publish books. Well, I believe that too. I mean, you know, look, it's one thing if it's a Kickstarter that you back and, you know, it, it takes them a while to get something done. But when you're buying from a website that says, like, order now, if it's, if it's going to take more than four to six weeks, they really should tell you that up front. Because, you know, it's, a, it's just about managing expectations, right? You know, especially now when we're used to like places like Amazon or where we're just sending people stuff like the next day or two days, it's harder to get people to, to be excited to wait for something. So you want to make sure they understand that up front and that probably makes it a lot easier. Uh, Chow says, as long as it takes for George R. Martin to write the next book. Boy, that's the truth, isn't it? Oh, hey, did anybody see uh, Lisa Joy's new film? Uh, was it called Reminis Reminiscence? Uh, with Hugh Jackman and then several of the cast members, like Tandy Newton from, um, from her TV show uh, Westworld. If you saw that, let me know. Let me know what you thought about it. Because I have some thoughts, but I want to see if, if anybody's actually seen it or not yet. Catherine, Redeemed Hydrate. Cheers to you, Catherine. Mm. You hear it? We're getting low. But it's so good. I mean, I have to... Now, this has got a spiced sugar cinnamon rim. I need to probably twist that so I get a little bit of that flavor in there. Mmm. Oh, yeah. That just like takes the edge off the off the scotch a little bit. Really nice. All right. We're painting flowers. I feel like I feel like Bob Ross now painting flowers, but that's a documentary I want to see. It was that Bob Ross documentary? But I haven't got a chance to watch it yet. I and Christy's interested, so we want to watch it together. But I'm streaming, or she's playing tennis, so it hasn't worked out yet. But I do want to see that. It looks really good. Um, Monique says, I'm still waiting to get that one. Oh, and Chow Redeemed Hydrate too. Cheers to you. Monique says, I did nothing but Netflix and chill Sunday. I don't think that means what you think it does, Monique. Oh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just laughing at that. Um, Netflix. What did I watch on Netflix? Uh, oh, on on Amazon Prime, I watched Jolt. Anybody see Jolt? With the um, chick from Underworld. It's pretty kooky. It's pretty crazy sci-fi action flick. I think we talked about it last time, but it was still funny. Uh, Monique says, no, I chilled and watched Netflix. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Monique says, I did watch the Bob Ross documentary. It made me sad and angry. Well, I think it will make me sad and angry too, but I still want to see it. Uh, because, you know, Bob Ross, it was a huge influence on my Like he, he and William Alexander, were, you know, other than like Don Bluth and Disney cartoons were probably like my biggest introduction to art and definitely my first introduction to art instruction you know art education so yeah it's a big deal to me um and especially something like a non-profit pbs show can become such a big like cultural thing you know i think that's really cool too monique says jolt is in my watch list it's fun that's what i'll say is it's fun just you know it's not a serious movie at all um, but the cast is pretty good. The action scenes are pretty good. I don't know if you called it a good movie overall, but it was fun. I, if you if you watch it for what it is, I think it's quite enjoyable. 
you have to like that kind of like popcorn mindless action flick I guess but you know the people that are in it are good uh, uh, but how about Cruella on Disney Plus has anybody watched that yet I watched it like the day it came out I watched it the day it came out I was like there I mean the day it came out free or included or whatever you want to call it I was all about it Christy loved it I loved it uh, Whitney says we did a one week trial of Paramount Plus in order to watch a soccer match since they have Quiet Place 2 we watched the first one to prep for the second the first one holds up even after seeing it before, even after seeing it before haven't got the second one yet hard to watch a movie with a little puppy dog um, Monique says I watched something the other day that made me think of you guys well mostly Christy have you seen The Dig ooh I kind of feel like oh yeah yeah we did I love that movie yeah we saw The Dig yeah it's set, it's set in England right yeah I'm sure that's the one I'm thinking of yeah it, we loved it it was it's definitely uh, reminded us of ourselves as well Now, the dig was awesome. And I forget the, the actress's name. Carrie Mulligan, I think, was in it. And she was fantastic, too. Randy Cakes says, Cruella was so good. Oh, Randy, I loved it so much. I thought, I mean, I kind of went into it being like, how are they going to make the story of a villain, a villain's origin, interesting? It's going to be, you know, just like Harley Quinn or something. I could not have been more wrong. They did such a great job. The music was great. The costumes were phenomenal. The sets and everything was really good. The characters were good. I loved it from start to finish. I hope they do a sequel. I only have one complaint, and that is that the like the Costumers Guild have come out and complained about Disney. So here's a movie about someone who you know works for a fashion designer and is fighting the power to get credit and agency over her own designs. Meanwhile, the person who made the real costumes for the movie has been totally cut out of the picture and doesn't get any kind of royalties or any kind of fees or payments above like whatever their base salary was. And it just seems really like a kick in the teeth. Um, you know, considering the subject matter of the film. So, it, it, it again it just makes Disney look really bad and really out of touch so that's really a shame um, as a creator I've been there so um, shame on them they should do better by their creative people because the creative people are making them successful but then they want to cut the creative people out uh, from sharing the success and it just doesn't make any sense so uh, love the movie absolutely adored the movie and I just hope that um, the people that were involved with the movie through their, you know, agents and through their guilds and unions and stuff can find a way to actually benefit from the success of the film and not get the shaft. So, Disney, do the right thing. It, you know, look at some other companies. It's, it, it's not hard to do the right thing. And people will love you more and be more loyal to you. Uh... Catherine says, I just finished The Mysterious Benedict Society and I loved it. Ooh, I've been wanting to watch that. I think Quinch Press saw that. I really want to watch it. Whitney says, Katie can watch Cruella, no interest from me. Interesting. Well, I'll tell you, I didn't know that I was going to like it, Whitney, but I really did. Um, Whitney says, Reservation Dogs, are we still the only ones watching it? You're missing out. Okay. First of all, you're now the third person who's mentioned it to me, and I did see a trailer for it, and it definitely does look like something I would want to see. So, um, juggling a couple other shows, not ready to switch to something new yet, but um, it is on my list of things I'm interested in, so I appreciate you bringing it up for sure. All right, I think those little tropical flowers are looking pretty nice. I think we can move on to our tiki, 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 tiki. But yeah, Reservation Dogs looks really cool. I, I definitely want to check that out. Um, I have been watching The Bad Batch still, so maybe when I finish Bad Batch, then I'll do that. I think I have like one or two more episodes of Bad Batch. It's amazing. Like, I think, I don't know, maybe of all the Clone Wars-related stuff, 
that Floney's done, Bad Batch might be the best. It's, gosh, the season's just been so good. And, like, I really feel like the animation and storytelling is is really outstanding. Like, you know, I mentioned Don Bluth earlier, but not really not since, like, the Don Bluth days has, like, animation really connected with me and touched me in such a way. So, uh, really, really, really enjoying The Bad Batch. And if you like... You know, Dave Filoni's other uh, animated projects, you know, Rebels and Clone Wars and stuff like that. To me, this is the best of all of them. So uh, definitely worth worth checking out. All right, I'm going to mix up a little bit of brown. And we'll do some, like, just some, like, glaze colors on our tiki. I don't want to get it too thick. I want to be able to, to do a little bit of blending. So maybe we'll take like this darker brown and then mix a little bit of this gold into it and make it like a medium brown. But yeah, Reservation Dogs, it definitely looks it looks cool. You guys have slipped into my old bad habits here. I have a tiki mug full of paintbrushes. And what am I doing? I just use the same one all night long. I, I know better. I just, I get to talking to you guys and I forget. And I just, I just rinse and use it. I, I, I should be using the smaller one for details and the bigger one for block ins, but I'm just just zone out. Mm -mm -mm. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have to finish this one and switch. That's what's gonna happen. All right, so our little tiki guy here. I think I kind of made him up. He's based on a couple of different tiki's, so I'll just give him some little some light places and some dark places and some shading and just kind of build him up a little bit, make him look cool. A little bit of depth so it doesn't look too flat. So I put mixed a little extra water into this so that we get, again, just more of like a glaze effect uh, so that it's not too strong. That way we can see some of the underlying brush strokes. Just trying to decide how I want to break this guy down a little bit here. I want to work some like maybe some like red values in here too and some colors and stuff so we'll we'll make it look cool that's for sure all right uh child time redeemed hydrate uh oh all right let me finish this one Then we'll just Martha Stewart it here with the second one without ice. Uh, Whitney says, less brushes for all your interns to watch. Yeah, I'm, I'm my intern now. I want less brushes to wash. I like that. That's good. All right. There we go. So just start to work a few little details into this guy. But yeah, Cruella, I mean, are... Is, are is there just two of us that have seen it? I'm really surprised by that. It's, it, I thought it was pretty kick-ass. I really enjoyed it. What about um, Nine Perfect Strangers or whatever it's called on uh, Hulu? The, the sort of murder mystery. You might have catch that yet. I think Christine, I watched the first two. A little bit of a slow burn. I was expecting like a murder to happen in the first episode and it didn't. And I was like, oh, okay, well the murder will happen in the second episode and then it didn't. So I'm like, well, I guess I'm gonna have to watch the third episode to see if there's a murder or not, but I haven't got to it yet. So we'll see what happens. But 
But the characters seem interesting. Although, um, Nicole Kidman's Russian accent, oof, it kind of comes and goes. Her, her Russian accent's a little weak. I mean, I expect her to be like, you know, I am Russian Snow Princess. Uh, you will come and listen to me teach you how to be well. No, it's not like that at all. It's just like mostly, I think, her like normal Australian accent with like a few. She kind of slips in and out of it. But she looks enchanting. They've done a good job of like making her look like a some sort of pixie or wood nymph or something. And uh, Melissa McCarthy's good in it. All the cast so far is really entertaining. So if, I don't know if it's just one character that dies or if they start dying off one by one. I don't know anything about it really, but they definitely are getting you invested in the characters so that when shit goes down, you know, you'll have a, a reason to maybe either suspect some or not others or something. Uh, Randy says, that's on my list. Yeah, I, I I find it interesting. You know, we'll see after I get past one more episode how it's going. But so far, like I said, a little bit of slow burn, but definitely interesting. You know, what I want to watch is the Marvel What If animated series, and I haven't got to that one yet. And a friend of mine works on it, so I really do want to uh, check it out. But I don't want to be rushed, you know. I, I, Sometimes people are like, oh, Brian, how come you don't watch this or you don't watch that? And, you know, usually it's because I, I limit myself to just like really like two or three shows at a time, like series, so that I can get invested in it and like really, you know, really have like be 100% into it. And so I'll, I'll just wait on other stuff. Like right now, I was waiting on Owl House season two because Quinch Press wanted me to wait. And then he went and watched like the whole thing in like one sitting or something, like one Saturday or Sunday or something. And I was like, but I waited for you. Uh, Catherine says, gotta go to bed, good night all. Good night, Catherine, thanks for hanging out with us tonight. It was a blast. Our Barker Bird is almost done, so hopefully you can kind of get an idea of what he's gonna look like. Thanks for hanging out with this. Good night. Have sweet dreams. Oh, thank you so much, Catherine. Thank you for that. Thanks for the bits. Have a very good night. That's so sweet. Don't forget to run the credits later so we can see Catherine's name pop up. This guy's starting to, he's starting to look like something. Look at that tiki guy coming to life. Just layering the color up. You guys know when I paint, I usually do it one of two ways. I just like glob it on, right? Or I do like a little bit at a time. And I thought tonight with this tiki guy would be a good one to just sort of like, just work those values up. Just a little bit at a time. Let them take shape. Get some of that wood grain going in there. I think that's going to look pretty nice that way. Uh, Ash says, what if is interesting. I love the comics and the animated style fits the show well. Well, my friend Steven Silver is working on that show. And if you don't know who he is, he's one of the main animators behind the Iron Giant. And so um, I think based on what I've seen, they're doing a fantastic job. It looks amazing. So if the if the stories are as good as the animation, I mean, I think they're going to have a hit on their hands there. So who knows? Maybe they'll, you know, pull down a couple of seasons or something. I mean, that'd be cool. It's also kind of weird, like, you know, Disney had kind of got out of television animation and now they're kind of doing it, you know, due to Marvel, which is kind of interesting when you think about it.
Now, I've only seen one episode of the new He-Man show on Netflix, the Kevin Smith one. Does anybody, anybody get into that? The first episode was like a real shocker. And I just haven't gone back to see what happens, to see where they go with that with that premise. But, I mean, it was an interesting premise. I mean, I won't say they killed off the main characters in the first episode, but at least they alluded to that sort of idea. And I thought, well, that was bold. I mean, I'm sure they exist in time and space somewhere, but seemed like a good way to like shift focus and expectations away from it being just like the you know older version of He-Man or something. When he says, I really enjoy Jeffrey Wright's Watcher. Oh, cool. I can't wait to see that. Um, when he says, I'm interested in He-Man, but I forgot it existed. You know, that's kind of what I was thinking. I was like, it kind of, like, there was a lot of hype around it. Like, the week it came out, the day it came out. And then I really didn't hear anything. I didn't see anything on fan sites. No one I knew was talking about it. So I'm like, well, did it just, did it just come and go? Did it just disappear? I don't, I don't know. What do you guys think about that Tiki guy? I think he's kind of fun looking. I kind of I kind of like where he's going. I wanted to be a little different than some of the other Tikis I've done in the past, and I think I think that's working. I didn't want him to be just like an exact copy of of, of a Tiki, even though I do some of those. I just thought wanted this guy to be a little different, you know. All right, let me grab some colored pencils here. Mm. Mm -mm. Hey guys, before I forget, I'm still reading the Gilded Age cocktails. Um, this is freaking fantastic. You, I'm, I'm very serious when I like, even if you're not a book reader, like it's so worth checking out. Um, I think I have a link here. Let me find it real quick. Yeah, here it is. Um, so what it is, is it's stories um, I think starting in like the late 1800s about cocktail culture and they'll tell the story of like you know how this specific drink came into being and then they'll give you like the original recipe or a version of the recipe for that drink so it's not really a recipe book it's more of a story book that has a couple of recipes in each chapter but I'm just really enthralled with this and you know it's a small book it's not a huge read right it's what is it a couple hundred pages at max so see what it says here like 160 pages, so it's no, it's not a big deal. Um, the author is Cecilia Tici, uh, and it's really good, really, really good. So um, I've been enjoying it. Gilded Age Cocktails, uh, definitely worth checking out. You know, sit on your nightstand and read a chapter every night and dream about cocktails. That's what I plan to do. So let's grab some colored pencils. We'll just do a little bit of tightening up on our tiki guy here and some of these plants. And then I think, you know, it may not be done done, but I think we'll we'll be at a good place for tonight. But if you guys see something, let me know. I think what we need to do too is just a little, little spot of white. That's funny, I almost dipped my brush in my cocktail instead of in my paint water. That'd have been entertaining. Were you guys here the night that I actually took a drink out of my paint water instead of my cocktail? Right, I did like a, I'd like spit it back out. That's crazy. I think that was uh, one drink too many that night. There we go. A little dot in his eye. That's what we were missing right there. The whole, the whole thing's solved now. All right, let's just do a little tightening up on this. Just dial it in. Let me get these details to pop. 
you know, you do these color blocks, and sometimes you just gotta like refine the edges a little bit for contrast. So you can kind of see where one thing ends and the next thing begins. Right? Look at that. Or already makes a difference. Just putting a few little sketchy marks in there. You can still see the brush strokes, so it's okay. I'll just give it a little bit more depth and more texture. Uh, Monique says, <laughs> no, lol, ooh, how did I miss this? Wait, which one are you lolling and ooing about, Monique? Oh my gosh, Monique cheered 100 bits. Thank you so much, Monique. Wow, thank you, thank you. Really appreciate that. It's nice to hang out with you guys and know you like the artwork. It's fantastic. Yeah, I think we're getting a little bit more of the like levels of depth there. Oh, the drinking of the paint water. Yeah, I don't remember what night that was, but it was gross because I didn't know if anyone noticed because I didn't talk about it. But I was just like, I grabbed the paint water and I like, took a big old swig and then I was like, spit it back out. <laughs> and so tonight I, I almost did the opposite. I almost put my paintbrush right into my cocktail with some acrylic paint. I'm sure that's... Sure, that's good for the insides. That and a little horse deworming medicine and... Well, you know what happens after that. Yeah, I think that was pretty late at the very end of one of the streams, Monique. And one where you guys had made me drink a lot because I know I was... Uh, everything was a little blurry that night towards the end. All right, oh, that's, that's looking good. You know, sometimes I look to see what you guys are seeing on the screen, because it kind of gives me a, a better perspective of, of how things look with a little distance, you know. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Oh, for those that are wondering, this is the, the color pencils I use. This is the Faber-Castell, uh, just a 36 set. So it's got a good amount of colors. Like you could always have more, but let me turn those around and you can see them. But I got this when I did the, uh, the Jim and the Holograms art, because I knew I was gonna need a really good set and I had some older sets, but I needed something good. So um, just try to use that as a way to kind of clean up and tighten up the artwork sometimes. Just make it a little bit more refined. Kind of allows you to, to blend your painting and your drawing skills together and just get everything to work a little bit more in harmony. Okay, so the tiki, the tiki idol. Got to do something with the tiki idol. Here we go. A little bit of wood grain. Just bring out some of these details a little bit, I think. Help him look. Just a little bit more finished. Just tighten it up a little bit. There we go. You can see how he's already starting to look a little bit more carved as we get a little bit more contrast in there. And I have to say, I really appreciate everyone who's been uh, supporting me on Patreon and on Twitch. Man, just, I couldn't believe it today on Patreon 
when we I was so I was teaching the iPad class for our Patreon members for brush techniques with Procreate on the iPad. I thought it was a really good class. All the demos worked out really well. And I already told you guys this, but I'm just reminiscing because it's so upsetting. And uh, man, to find out that that recording, that video did not record. Oh, I was so upset, so mad. I really just, I couldn't let it go, you know? Just sometimes those things happen and it just kind of messes with your whole day, you know? So at least here, I don't have to worry about that because it's streaming. So, you know, it's captured automatically on YouTube. I don't have to worry about the recording on my end not working or anything like that. So, thank goodness. Thank goodness. But he says, you know, for future reference, if I ever say Netflix and chill, it's the B-rated or boring version and has no sexual connotation. Well, I knew that you didn't mean it that way, but it was still funny. Because I'm the same type of person, I would say the same thing and mean it totally benign. And so that's what made it funny was because I knew. But then I read it out loud and I was like, oh, other people won't know. Other people are going to be like, ooh, Monique, go for it. All right. I think we're getting close on this, guys. Monique, you've got a good eye, so if you see something I missed or something I need to tighten up on this guy, let me know, because I'm having fun with this one. I'm certainly not in a hurry, but at the same time, I feel like we're getting close, so... Let me know. Let me know what you see with your eyes. The Monique vision. Trying to make him look a little more carved around the face there. Did anybody catch the new uh, James Bond trailer today? I don't know if it really showed us anything new that we haven't seen in the other trailers, but it was nice to see a new trailer out. And I also noticed that they said on uh, Apple TV is going to be like a behind the scenes documentary with uh, Daniel Craig about all of his Bond movies, so that could be entertaining. If you're a fan of 007, and I certainly am, I, I grew up in a household with a dad who was like really into that stuff, so of course it had a big influence on me as well. Monique says it looks good. Oh, great, great. That's what I like to hear. Thank you, Monique. Thank you. That gives me, I can have a sigh of relief because I know you will not let me off the hook. So I appreciate it. All right, so let's take a look. We got our Barker bird. We got our Tiki idol. I think it's coming together. I think it's looking pretty good. Tighten, just do a little bit of a little bit of outlining and detail on these flowers. Where are we? Oh yeah, we're only we're only an hour and ten minutes in, so we can just give it a few more minutes here. But yeah, the new the new Bond movie. I mean, it's gonna be Daniel Craig's last movie. Some of them have been good. Some of them have been less good. I'm hoping this last one is good. So we shall see. We shall see how it does. But you know, I figure like that was supposed to come out in 2020, right? So I mean, they've had time to get it right. So one would hope that if there was any problems with the film that they did what they needed to do in the meantime. I 
I saw a behind the scenes thing about um, National Lampoon's Vacation. And it was actually, it was more about, um, uh, shit, Hughes that wrote the movies. Um, <laughs> Monique says, it's 11-11 here, I'm making a wish. Ah, hope your wish comes true. Um, but they were saying that on the on the National Lampoon's Vacation movie, that all the stuff that happens at Wally World, the end of the movie, right, where they actually go to Wally World, and they actually ride the rides and all that, that was all filmed like six months later. That was not the original ending to the film. So the original ending was like Clark taking people hostage and stuff, similar to what happens in Christmas Vacation. So... Uh, I never knew that. I never heard that before, and now I'm kind of kind of interested. I'm like, that movie would have been totally different if they never went to Wally World. And they said when audiences watched the test screenings, they loved the movie up until the ending, and then they were just like, they're like, no, this is horrible. And they, the studio figured out that the whole movie is about them going to Wally World. We need to actually get them to Wally World, and so that's when they decided to go back and shoot a new ending so who knew I'd never heard that before but um, I thought that was kind of fascinating kind of the things you find out years and years later um, Whitney says unless it goes like Wonder Woman 84 and the extra time doesn't help boy I sure hope that's not the case um Man, I thought that movie had a lot of potential, and there are some some definite entertaining scenes in that movie. But and I, I love some of the actors, and I think Patty Jenkins is like can be a really good director. But boy, on a whole, it's just kind of a forgettable film. It's really a shame. I know what happens, and I know that you know I don't have to like every movie. Not every movie's for me, but it, it was still kind of a shame. It. it it could have been so much more. And especially like, I've worked on so many comics with Wonder Woman and Max Lord. I kind of really know those characters and there was so much potential there. All right. Okay, what do we think guys? Final look. I think we're, I think we're looking pretty good. Uh, Whitney says, not the deepest of the behind the scenes features, but Netflix, the movies that made us, has a lot of good. Oh, God, I love those. Like, I like the toys that made us, but I kind of feel like the movies that made us is even better. Not better in a different way. Like, some of the things they come up with on there are just amazing. And especially when they get the good interviews, you know. Uh, Whitney says, it's extra disappointing as to how good the first one was. Yeah, I agree. The only problem I had with the first Wonder Woman movie was sort of like the third act with uh, fighting the CG god and everything was kind of lame. But the rest of it was amazing. Monique says, hey, I did a thing today, dot, dot, dot. All right, let us know, Monique. If you need a minute to type, Monique, I'll, uh, I can always jump ahead and run the credits or something. So you let me know. So here we go. Barker Bird from Disney's Enchanted Tiki Room. Monique says, I cut most of my hair off. It's like super short. Would you get like a pixie cut? Are you all, are you, are you a, are you a pixie now? Are you hanging out with uh, Peter Pan? I'll have to look on the internet and see if you post some pictures to check out Facebook. I've been, I've been growing the top of mine out a little bit, but no pixie cut for me. <laughs> Maybe we'll have to do the next stream. Everybody talk about their pandemic haircuts. I think I had two the whole time. Uh, Monique says, not quite a pixie cut, but close. Very short. Cool. Maybe do you like the shave sides or anything? I'm waiting for the uh, Legend of Billie Jean you know, haircut to come back. I mean, I guess it already has, but you know what I mean. <laughs> all right guys um so barker bird that's good we talked about the back to the future art monique even ordered one thank you so much monique 
Um, hey, if you like that Back to the Future art, share that online. Share it on social, please. Um, need, need some people to discover that because it's one I'm not going to be able to shout out a lot. So the more people that find it, the better. And hey, it's a, you know, free with purchase or buy one, get one free or whatever you want to call it. But, you know, pay for the other thing. Get the thing you want. Um, so I'm going to take just a couple of seconds. Oh, when he says it, it looks good, it turned out great. Well, thank you so much. I had a lot of fun with this one. I've been wanting to do some sort of tropical bird since we started this thing. So this was a fun one to do. And you guys know me. I'm sure I'll futz with it some more. But um, it was fun. I liked it. So we'll have to do... Uh, maybe we'll do more of these two-parters where we can like start one and then tighten it up a little bit. That was kind of fun. Uh, so I'm going to run the credits and I'll be right back. Woo, Monique! Way to go, Catherine! Oh yeah, Whitney, Catherine, you guys are moderators tonight. Thank you, Whitney. How about those credits? So, Whitney, I had set you and Catherine up as temporary mods, but since Quinch Press wasn't here, but then we didn't really need any moderation, other than it's time for a raid. So, let me see who we're going to raid tonight. Uh, we got some good ones here. Uh, don't show me a commercial. Show me what they're doing. Oh, you bastards. See, I'm using my own little personal array interface. It's not supposed to show me commercials, but here it is. I have to watch a commercial to know if we're going to raid this person or not. Not cool, Twitch. Not cool. Mm. It's a long commercial, too. There's like, it's like a video game. There's like dragons, fighters. I don't know what's going on there. Show me the channel. Mm, what's he drawing? What are you drawing? Oh, it's a girl in a bathtub. Well, that can't be a bad thing. All right. Um, we're going to raid Ross Draws. Looks like he's doing a digital painting of like an anime girl in a bathtub. So we can check that out. Um, you guys, thank you so much. Thanks for hanging out with me tonight. I had a blast. It's so great to see all of you again. Uh, thanks for your likes. Thanks for your cheers. Thanks for your subscriptions. Uh, thanks to everyone who also supports me here on Twitch and Patreon. Thanks to everyone who's getting the Back to the Future art. Stay on target, and I will see you next time.